really nicely into my mic, my mic. Hey there, art lovers. My name is Taylor, and today I am jazzed to be listening to some incredible music, but surprise, it is not going to be performed by humans. They will be performed by household electronic items. Now, you may have seen some viral videos of your favorite pop songs being sung by machines. But I raise you this. What if one day there were machines that could write their own music from scratch? What if one day there were robot composers conducting robot music? Maybe that day is today. In this episode, I'm super excited to be traveling to Montreal and virtually to Vancouver to talk to two musicians about mechanical and computational creativity. Baser, how are you? I'm good, yourself? I'm doing well. Welcome to Montreal. I love French. Woohoo! Oui. <laughs> I'm actually a really big fan of yours. You have a YouTube channel, Baser888. I really like the floppy disks that you have that you get to perform music. Yeah. Can they perform any song? Possibly. Okay. There is this magic flute challenge that's like going around social media. Okay. It goes like do 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 that one. I think I've heard of it. Yeah? Yeah. Why don't we uh, go see if we can? Okay. Follow me. This is so cool. What, I, I don't even know where to begin. Like, what's underneath it? What do these wires do? The floppy drive is connected to these individual wires, then is connected to a microcontroller, connected to the computer, and that's how I kind of puppet master all these little drives. Prior to that, it kind of looked like this, that you might recognize on old computers. Yeah. And what they had back in the day is they would put it inside like this, and it would be used as a storage. Yes, you may. And there you go. This looks like the save icon. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can see, if you put it in right up here. Okay. There you go, until it clicks. So, the floppy drive has a little motor over here mm -hmm. that is connected to the screw, and this thing is called the head. Okay. When the motor spins or ticks forward, it moves forward. As you feed it different frequencies, it will vibrate against the body of the floppy drive and it will create a sound. So the faster it is, the higher the note, mm -hmm. and the slower it is ticking, the lower the note. So you go almost think of it like a guitar. When you play a string, it vibrates at a certain frequency. If you string them all together, then you'll create music. Okay, so what is all of this stuff I'm seeing, like... So uh, this is, here is a MIDI. Okay. And it is a bunch of notes that are on a scale mm -hmm. over time. The music, I usually just find it online. Mm -hmm. Usually there's lots of people who have made MIDI files over the years of songs, especially more popular songs. Mm -hmm. If they are less known, then sometimes you might need to make your own, so which would be required to just listen to the music and literally input the song one by one. But yeah, MIDI's have been around since so uh, basically flip phone cell phones. Oh. The old ringtones used to be MIDI files. Can we hear what it sounds like? Uh, sure. I'll put a little something quickly together when I play this, and you'll see that it jams up and see what the limitations of it. Sometimes one drive can play a high note and the other one cannot, like, at all. Okay. So they have kind of little quirks that you kind of like. Oh, Ooh. they're quirky. They are. How did you learn how to do all of this? 
So I went to a college in a engineering technology. I enjoy playing for myself on the guitar. Most people would look at this stuff and think that it's garbage, but um, you could reuse this to make music instead. On the guitar, I usually read tabs, mm -hmm. which is basically telling you which note to play um, at what time, which is very similar to what I'm doing to this. The tabs are like the computer, and I'm actually the little microcontroller. Puppet master becomes yep, the, pup. the puppet. Exactly. Uh, tell me about your YouTube channel. I feel like I should get an autograph or something. <laughs> no, it's not that uh, crazy. Um, but no, I, I started on YouTube just because I was like, oh, uh, I like making this music and stuff. And so I thought that other people would uh, enjoy hearing it. Mm -hmm. I think literally my first video came out and I got mm -hmm. a request. From that point on, I decided to open up a Google Docs or just keep track of basically all the requests everyone has ever uh, made. I like providing to the community or anyone or I like making people's day. Nice Yes. <laughs> Two Ami. <laughs> Can they do the magic flute challenge? Hey, Arnie, can you hear me okay? I can. Thanks for meeting with me today. So Arnie, I know that you are a professor at Simon Fraser University. What do you teach? So I teach music and sound within the School for the Contemporary Arts. I use software to generate my musical ideas, performing with computers as collaboration between the creative system and myself, it's like my MuseBot band. MuseBots, what are they? So MuseBots are a piece of software. It's very much like an improvising ensemble of musicians, like jazz drummers, jazz piano players, rock guitar players that work together to create music. All I do is I you know, literally push a button and then it creates a piece of music. And then I push it again and it'll create a different version of the piece. That's one of the things that I explore in my own systems, which we call generative music. Look at this. Oh my goodness. My muse bots at the moment are living inside a DAW. A DAW is a digital audio workstation. Can you get your music bots to make some cool jazz music? Yeah. Uh, I'm a, a big fan of Miles Davis. I tried to make muse bots modeled after the human musicians in that band. It's very difficult for uh, robots to actually convince somebody when you're trying to play as well as a human being. It's not jazz per se, but they're always changing in relation to what's going on and they communicate with each other. So um, just to explain what we're seeing right here, essentially the producer bots here, they're gonna, it's gonna create a melody and a form down here. And these are the actual muse bots here. But in order for them to react differently, I have what's what I consider to be personalities. If you imagine uh, musicians going to school and learning to play, they play differently, even though they've learned the same way. Can we hear some? Yeah. So when the music starts, the first one is impatience. They're the ones that are gonna start playing right away. The next personality trait is rudeness. If another muse bot is playing, they're just gonna interrupt. And the last one is ego. So how long do they want to solo for? 
That kind of just blew my mind. That is so cool. Because I'm like, how, how are you assigning personalities? It's like, is someone a Gemini and someone's a Leo and a Taurus? Like, <laughs> that's so, that's really, really rad. Now I want to know what your sign is. <laughs> I am a Leo. You're a Leo? Are you an August Leo? I am, yes. Does that mean anything? Yes, it does. It means your entire personality. That's my <laughs> computer programming. <laughs> These muse bots can make music by themselves, yes? Mm -hmm. So what's so your <laughs> what's your role in that? Are you kind of composing? Or if you weren't there, would they still just, can the band like cut you out? <laughs> I kind of view it almost as a parent and children. You know, it's, I'm teaching the, the muse buzz to do something a certain way. I'm really guiding them. I'm very involved in how they, they react. But at some point, I just sort of let them go and see what, see what happened. So you can still kind of decide, like, I'm gonna hit play and you'll play until this time, but do you even need to be there to, to hit play or could they hit play themselves one day? I think that's one of the goals. You know, this is still a far, uh, far off in the future, but one day the muse bots may say, yeah, I want to play Miles Davis. And then the next day they can say, uh, I'm kind of feeling like some Beethoven, you know, and, and generate <laughs> some of that. There's something magical. And, and I come back to that idea of uh, collaborating with them. I'm changing my direction, uh, just as I would when I collaborate with uh, other musicians or other artists. They influence me, I change my mind, and I go, wow, that wasn't the direction I thought I was gonna go, but let's go down there and explore that. So out of all of your many creations and many tunes, what's your favorite? One of my favorites certainly is uh, the Trap album that the MuseBots created a number of years ago. So uh, uh, let's play a little bit of that. Thank you so much for chatting with me, showing me your tunes. I am gonna go home and listen to that Spotify album now. Sounds good. I'll let the muse bots know. <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> I know I have to end the episode, but this is some pretty fire music. It has been awesome getting to know both Arnie and Vaser and seeing their approach to music, whether it's for the online community or just experimental collaborations. I have to say, innovation leads to some pretty cool beats. I'll see you guys in the next episode.